Let's take a gander as we review polynomials. Uh, we're going to write each polynomial in standard form. So, so standard form will always have the highest exponent first and then go down subsequently. So for example, standard form might be x cubed and then x squared and then x to the 1 and then some constant plus c. And of course there's operations in between each of those. So that means in this first one, putting it in standard form, I'm going to put the positive 6x squared first. Next, that's my what's called my uh, quadratic term. So here's my linear term. So that comes next. And last is my constant plus 4. Now it also asks us to, to name each polynomial uh, based on its degree and the number of terms. So the highest degree here is a 2. So we call that a quadratic. And there are three terms, 1, 2, 3. So we call that a trinomial. So standard form, 6x squared minus 3x plus 4, and this is a quadratic trinomial. So in this next one, we are asked to simplify each sum or difference. So we see here that I have a binomial plus a binomial. So essentially all I do is combine like terms. So here I have my quadratic terms. So those two can combine to be 10 x cubed. And let me clean that up. Now we look at our constants or anything else. So these two here are both constant. So 5 plus 3 is 8. So here is my standard form. If we were asked to name it, which um, we aren't, but if we were to name it, this would be a quadratic because the highest exponent is a 2. And there are two terms, so it's a binomial, quadratic binomial. On number four, the first thing we need to do is take care of our negative here, and we are going to distribute it to the right there. Notice that it does not affect the left. We don't go that way. And so now we have a sum. So I look for my like terms. I'm going to start with my highest exponent. We see quadratic here, quadratic here. So I get 4x squared. I now also see my linear terms. I have a negative 5x and a negative x, so that's negative 6x. And I have a constant here, plus 1, and a constant here, plus 3, so that's plus 4. If I were asked to name it, this would be a quadratic because of the square and a trinomial because there are three terms. The next part that we are attack, kill, and destroying is simplify each product. And product, of course, means multiplication or the answer to a multiplication problem. And we're going to, again, write in standard form. So in this first problem, number 5, what we do is take our 5x and distribute. So I get 5x squared, and then we distribute it to the last term as well to get 15x now I see if there's anything to combine, but clearly this is a quadratic. This is a linear because the power of 1, so they do not combine, and that's my answer. Practice number 6, and if we look at number 7, what we have here is a situation with double distribution. So I'm going to send the x to the x to get x squared. Then I'm going to send the x to the negative 3 to get negative 3x. Then I'm going to send the 7 to the x to get 7x, and lastly, I'm going to send the 7 to the negative 3, negative 21. And when I look at this, what looks like a quadnomial, made that word up, I look for anything that can be combined, quadratic, linear, linear, constant. So these two here can combine, and so I bring down the x squared, no change there. Now these two here can combine to be positive 4x and then I bring down the constant. So this would be the product of my binomials up here. Again, one way to remember this is FOIL firsts 
outers, inners last, but I like to say double distribution. We would apply that same concept on number eight. And number nine actually has a shortcut, if you can recall. And the shortcut looks like this. I like to look at it like an M here. And so what we do is we take our first term here and we square it. So it's simply x squared. Now the second term, the middle term, is going to be the product, and then we double it. So we multiply these and double it. So when we multiply those, we get a 4x, and we double it to get an 8x. And lastly, we square this to get a 16. So square, square this, multiply and double, and square to get that. And all we just do is pay attention to the signs. The sign will always be, whenever we have a square, will always be positive here because negative squared is going to be positive. And whatever symbol this is, that's going to be there. So that's a shortcut for number 9. There's also a shortcut here. This is, these are conjugates on number 10. Conjugates. And so there's nothing much to remember except it's a difference of two squares, and that's it. And now on number 11 here, uh, we have a binomial times a trinomial. So now, effectively, we have 2 times 3. So there's going to be six terms to begin with, and sometimes uh, these will combine. So I distribute my first term to get 2x cubed. Then I'm going to distribute it to the middle to get positive x squared. And lastly to there to get positive 4x. Now I distribute the negative 2 there to get negative 4x squared. And then continuing on, negative 2x. And then negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. We look for like terms. This one has no like terms, so we bring this one down all by its lonesome. And now I look for others. I have a quadratic here and a quadratic there to get negative 3x squared. Next, my linear terms are here, and that's going to combine to be positive 2x. And my last thing is a constant, which I can write all by its lonesome. So here, if we had to name it, which it's not asking us to, this would be a cubic polynomial um, or quadnomial. But for now, we can say polynomial. And our next part here on number 13, we are asked to factor out the GCF of each polynomial. So we're going to rewrite this. So when I look at this first term here, 16x and the 24, I notice that I can factor out an 8. And when I do that, 16 divided by 8 is 2, and x stays there. 24 divided by 8 is 3, and that stays there. On number 14, Again, 7 and 14, I can pull out a 7. And then the x squared and the x, I can pull out an x. Now when I divide, I get x plus 2 remaining inside. And the same thing will apply to number 15. For these next problems, factor completely. The first thing we should always look for, number 1, is always look for GCF. Is there a common factor I can pull out? of each term. So here I see a, there is no um, x on this term, and this one doesn't have a, a coefficient besides 1, so that means there is no GCF. But if I were to notice, say, number 22, I can factor out a 2 first. So in number 22, I would pull out a 2 first to get 25x squared minus 4. So always check for GCFs first. So there is no GCF here, and so a besides 1, so a the next thing we can do is snowflake it. So I put my x's here. I put 1, 1 times 15 goes upstairs, and my b goes downstairs, ochito loquito, and now I find two numbers that multiply to 15 and add to 8, and clearly we see 5 and 3. So here are my factors, if they can be reduced. So I just say x plus 5, and then this one is x plus 3. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated one on number 19 here. 
Um, first thing to see is 3, 14, and 8 have no common factors. This last term does not have an x, so there's no GCF besides 1. So I set up my sn 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 snowflake, and I put my 3x here. Don't put the square. And I multiply the 3 times ochito to get 24, positive. And I bring down the b on the bottom. b goes on the bottom. So now I consider two numbers that multiply to 24, add to 14. So what do we have? 8 and 3 add to 11. That's close, but not quite. 6 and 4 add to 10. So we see actually 2 and 12. Now in this first fraction here, 3 and 2, this fraction here cannot be reduced any further. So there's one of my factors. However, this fraction can be reduced. I can divide both by 3. So I'm actually going to extend it out and divide by 3, divide by 3, and now I have my other factor, x plus 4. And if I just did a quick check, 3x times x is x squared, uh, 3x times uh, 4 is 12, and 2x here gives me 14x, and 2 times 4 gives me 8. On number 23, we might be tempted to just go ahead and set up our snowflake. However, we should always check first for the G, the C, and the F. Notice here, a 2, even, and even. All of them are even, so I can factor out a 2. So now when I divide each term by 2, I now get this situation, this trinomial. So now I'm only going to set up my snowflake using the trinomial and ignoring the 2 for now. So uh, a times c is 16. I'm going to put an x on the top there, and b goes on the bottom. And I look for any two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to 10. So not 4 and 4. However, 8 and 2 do work. Since this fraction cannot be reduced, that's one of mine. So I bring down the 2. I bring down the x plus 8. And this fraction cannot be reduced, so there is my other factor. And this is now factored completely, completely. Why? Because there's a 2 outside, and then the other two are binomials. And to finish up number 22, when, uh, after I factor out my 2, I do notice I have perfect square here, 25 and x squared. Both of these are perfect squares. And the 4 is a perfect square. So I have a difference of 2 squares. So what do I do with that? Well, it's actually multiplies to conjugates. So the 25x squared, we square root that to get 5x, and always bring down a minus, and this 4 square root is 2, and now we conjugate that. We could have set up snowflake, if you wanted, ignoring the 2, and putting negative 100. Why? Because this is my a, and this is my b as a c. There is no b, the middle term is missing, and I do put a 25x here and a 25x here. And if I had done that, I would have got, um, gotten these two, negative 10 and positive 10, and both of these reduce to 5x and 2, and this reduces to 5x and negative 2. However, remembering a difference of two squares becomes a product of conjugates is much faster than this. All right, here we are asked to find the area of the shaded region. And what we see here is that we have a large rectangle minus a small rectangle. So effectively, I'm finding the area of this puppy, and I'm going to subtract the area of this puppy. So the area is base times height and base times height with different bases, different heights. So the first one is going to be here's a base and here's my height. So I just say x plus 4 times x plus 5. That's the area of the first one. The area of my second one here is going to be x times x minus 3, base times height. And notice that I put a subtraction in between because I'm subtracting the two areas. Now I can do my double distribution here to get x squared plus 9x plus 20. And over here is a single distribution. I'm going to distribute the negative x in to get negative x squared and positive 3x. Now the last thing I have to do is combine like terms. Notice that my x squareds drop out entirely. I am left with my linear terms here, which would be 12x. And only one thing left is my constant, 
which is 20. So my final answer is 12x plus 20, and my answer would be units squared. We don't know if it's inches or centimeters, so we just put units squared.